Welcome back on to the next video. Today we are talking about salt. Yep. Does salt prevent leg cramps? This is my general table salt, but you know what I'm saying. You've seen it at races, people taking handfuls of the stuff and shoving it into their face. Does it really help? That's what we're going to be talking about on today's video. We're joined by our coach, Lindsay Parry, uh, and we're going to be talking about table salt. Should you be taking handfuls on a run? Does it really help? Does it actually cause cramps? We'll find out on today's video. Uh, don't forget, if you haven't subscribed and you don't want to miss any of our videos, all you need to do is click on the button that's on the screen right now, and be sure to head over to our website, coachparry.com that's where we help you become fitter faster and stronger and every single week we put these videos out we've got podcasts and you don't want to miss any of them that's coachparry.com it's the million dollar question every time we talk about cramping i say that uh, Lindsay. if we had the cure we would be gazillionaires yeah absolutely and i mean as it is that is a part of the the nutrition engine in industry that does make quite a lot of money because there are people that are cramping because of electrolyte balance, but we know that that's not the primary cause of cramping. So those few people that it does help are enough to sustain that entire industry because they do have enough cases where it does work yep. that everybody wants in on the action. Well, let's talk. You, you mentioned uh, electrolyte. Salt does, does salt, first of all, is that a major factor in cramping? Should we be having more? Should we be having less? What's the deal with salt and, and, and leg cramps? So, so sodium in particular is a very interesting one because if you have very low stores of sodium, it can lead to, to cramping, although things like magnes uh, magnesium and calcium shortages are, are probably worse than having a sodium shortage. But yes, it absolutely can. The reason why you don't just want to blanket, take a blanket approach and start smash, smashing salt tablets is because too much sodium can also lead to cramping. So I think in very long ultra distance and multi-day races, it is important to be doing some sodium replacement. Uh, but that's the sort of thing that I'd probably try and get uh, access to, to some sort of lab testing to figure out what is the right amount of sodium and is there, am I taking in enough sodium through energy drinks, gels, um, the, the, the bars, uh, tablets, etc. that I take because all of those things do tend to have some sodium in them. And so for most people, as long as we are practicing good nutrition, you are going to be replacing quite a lot of the sodium that you, you, you are losing. Um, and that's why for most people that is not the cause of, of cramping. For most people, cramping is caused by fatigue. There is a delay in the signaling due to fatigue in telling muscles when to contract and when to relax. And typically we always have two muscles working with each other. And if we look at the quads and hamstrings, that's, that's an example. So when your quadriceps contract, you want your hamstrings to be nice and relaxed. And when your hamstrings need to contract, you want your quadriceps to be nice and relaxed. And with this, this delayed signaling and fatigue that happens, and there comes a point where both muscles are contracting at the same time. Um, or let's say that the quad needs to now contract because you're about to hit the ground, but the hamstring hasn't finished contracting it and the, the quadricep contracts too quickly, boom, we have full mu involuntary muscle contraction. That is what, what a cramp is. Lindsay, you'll see it quite often uh, at running events, guys standing with bottles of table salt on the side of the road and then the odd runner running past grabbing a handful and, and wolfing it down. I, I can't think of anything worse. Does that actually help? Probably not with cramping, to be fair, um, but the one area where, where having a little bit too much salt can be handy is that it can drive your, your thirst. Um, and so in endurance events, if we are losing loads of, of electrolytes um, through our sweat and we are taking in tons of water at the same time, um, and not taking in energy drinks and enough of all the other good things, we can actually start to dilute our sodium concentrations within our, our bodies, which number one, then 
makes you feel not thirsty. Okay, like and and while the de- dehydration isn't typically a medical condition, it's probably not great to just go on for hours without drinking. That's the on the one hand, but the second hand, far more serious, of course, is that if even though you are not thirsty, you just keep pumping in fixed amounts of fluids and that sodium level continues to drop, then we can get into very dangerous territory with water intoxication or um, hyponatremia, and that rapidly can become a medical condition. So certainly some salt and some salty foods and some salty supplements are a a good idea. I mean, fistfuls of salt, I also couldn't possibly think of anything worse. Lindsay, let's let's sort of look at if somebody is prone to cramping and is looking for solutions. We've spoken about salt today. What are some of the other things that they can look at that could help prevent their their cramps? So look, again, as as we've we've spoken in previous video video, sometimes there's preventative stuff and there's stuff that we can do in a situation to help. Okay, so we know that there are probably about a. a Roughly a third of the people who cramp are cramping because of nutritional imbalances, which then typically show themselves up as electrolyte imbalances. So certainly if you are a cramper, it is definitely worth trying some of those electrolyte supplements um, that are sold. Um, even even something like rehydrate or similar uh, taken 30Ks into an ultra and then you know every 30Ks on in a marathon is probably less of an issue, but maybe you'd want to take it halfway in, 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 a, in a marathon. So you can you can try that, okay? If it works, fantastic, because then you've got your solution right there. Then there are some products that are now on the market which can assist stopping cramping because they force the muscle or the motor neurons or to slow down. So they actually bind onto those motor neuron um, sites and slow them down so that we can get back to this thing of the ag- agonist and antagonist working nicely together because we improve the coordination of that contracting and, and relaxing. And that those products typically have capsium or you know, the chili extract in them. Um, and pickle juice is another one that can, can do exactly the, the, the same thing. So you can try that, and that will often stop the cramp dead during the race. But of course, we want to get to a point where we aren't getting debilitating cramps during a race. And the way we do that, with improved and better training for the event that you're training for, incorporating strength training as part of your um, routine and going into the race and teaching yourself to run, walk, and use those walk breaks to reduce the fatigue or delay the onset of the fatigue in the race um, and therefore reduce the incidence of cramping. Thanks for joining us on this video. Don't forget, if you don't want to miss any of these videos that we put out, hit the subscribe button over here. Uh, You can catch our latest video over here. And one of our most popular is over here. And also, if you want to shave 10 minutes off your PB, all you need to do is download our free strength training program. You can get that right here.